In this video, we're going to talk about Charles' Law. Charles' Law describes the relationship between volume and temperature. So what happens to the volume of a gas if you increase the temperature? Will it go up or down? So let's say if you have a balloon at a temperature of 300 Kelvin, and let's say it's a 2 liter balloon. Now what's going to happen if you double the temperature to 600 Kelvin? What's going to happen to the volume of a balloon? Whenever you heat a gas at constant pressure, the volume of the gas expands. So the balloon is going to be two times as large. It's going to be four liters. And that's the basic idea behind Charles' Law. It shows the direct relationship between temperature and volume. If you increase the temperature, the volume will increase. Likewise, if you decrease the temperature, the volume will decrease. So these two are directly related to each other. So let's say if you were to make a graph between volume and temperature, it would look like a straight line. It's a linear relationship. So as the volume goes up, the temperature, the Kelvin temperature goes up uh, with it at the same rate. Now the equation that is associated with Charles' Law is this equation. It's V1 divided by T1 is equal to V2 over T2. So that's the formula you need to know when solving problems associated with Charles' Law. Now let's put what we learn into practice. Let's try this problem. A 3.5 liter flexible container holds a gas at 250 Kelvin. What will the new volume be if the temperature is increased to 400 Kelvin? So let's write the information that we know. The original volume, V1, occupies a space of 3.5 liters. And it occurs at a temperature of 250 Kelvin. Our goal is to find V2. We need to calculate its value. And the new temperature is 400 Kelvin. So all we got to do is plug in the information into this equation and solve for the missing variable. So V1 is 3.5 liters, T1 is 250 Kelvin. We're going to just rewrite V2, that's what we're looking for, and T2 is 400 Kelvin. So the best thing you could do in this problem is cross multiply. So 3.5 times 400, that's 1400. And that's equal to 250 times V2. Now the next thing that we need to do is divide both sides by 250. So V2 is 1400 divided by 250. And so you should get 5.6 liters for the volume. So as you can see, as we increase the temperature from 250 Kelvin to 400 Kelvin, the volume increased from 3.5 liters to 5.6 liters in harmony with Charles' Law. Anytime you increase the temperature, the volume will increase. Now let's move on to the next question. A 275 milliliter balloon is filled with air at 25 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is increased to 50 Celsius, what is the new volume of the balloon? Now, in our earlier example, we had a balloon that had a temperature. Okay, let's just redraw that. So we had a balloon that had a temperature of 300 Kelvin, and it was 2 liters. And we doubled the temperature to 600 Kelvin, and so the volume will double as well. It's going to be 4 liters. So in this example, we have a balloon that's at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And the volume is 275 milliliters. So if we increase the temperature to 50 degrees Celsius, what should the new volume be? If you say 275 times 2 or 550, that is not correct. The volume is proportional to the Kelvin temperature, not the Celsius temperature. If you double the Kelvin temperature, 
the volume will double. However, if you double the Celsius temperature, it will increase, but it will not double. In fact, when you're using this formula, V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, you can use any units for V1 and V2. However, they simply have to match. So if V1 is in milliliters, V2 has to be in milliliters. If V1 is in liters, V2 has to be in liters. Now the situation is different with temperature. T1 and T2, they have to be in Kelvin. It won't work if you put it in Celsius. You will not get the right answer. So you have to convert it to Kelvin. So for this one, we just have to work it out. The temperature, I mean the volume will not double if the Celsius temperature doubles. It just doesn't work that way. Now let's work on this problem. Let's write down what we know. V1 is 275 milliliters. Now T1 is 25 Celsius. We're looking for V2 and T2 is 50 Celsius. Now we need to convert the Celsius temperature into a Kelvin temperature. To calculate the Kelvin temperature, it's simply the Celsius temperature plus 273.15. And for practical purposes, I'm just going to use 273. So if we add 25 plus 273, we will get the Kelvin temperature of 298. And 50 plus 273 will give us the Kelvin temperature of 323. So notice that the reason why the volume does not double is because the Kelvin temperature uh, doesn't double. As the Kelvin temperature increases, it doesn't increase at the same rate as the Celsius temperature. See, the Celsius temperature doubled from 25 to 50, but the Kelvin temperature did not double. So just keep that in mind. So now let's use the formula to calculate V2. So V1 is 275 milliliters. T1 is 298 Kelvin. T2 is 323 Kelvin. And our goal is to calculate V2. So just like before, we're going to cross multiply. So let's multiply 275 by 323. And so that's 88,825. And the units is milliliters times Kelvin. And next we have 298 times V2. So notice that the unit Kelvin will cancel. And so V2 is going to be in milliliters. So now we need to divide both sides by 298. So 88,825 divided by 298, that will give us a volume of 298 milliliters. And so this is the answer. Number three, the volume of a 500 milliliter container is decreased to 0.24 liters. What is the new temperature in Celsius if the original temperature is 80 degrees Celsius? So let's write down what we know. V1 is 500 milliliters. V2 is 0.24 liters. T1 is 80 degrees Celsius and we want T2 to be in Celsius. However, when using the formula, we can't use the Celsius temperature. So we need to convert 80 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So 80 plus 273 is 353 Kelvin. So we can use that temperature. Now the second issue we have to deal with is that the volumes don't match in units. So I'm going to convert 500 milliliters into liters. Now keep in mind, 1,000 milliliters is equal to 1 liter. So 500 divided by 1,000, that's 0.5. So V1 is equivalent to 0.5 liters. 
So we're going to use these values in the equation. So let's use the formula now. So let's replace V1 with 0.5 liters, T1 with 353 Kelvin, V2 with 0.24 liters. Now let's calculate the value of T2. So let's cross multiply. 353 times 0.24 is 84 point seven two and that's equal to 0.5 times T2. So dividing both sides by 0.5, this will give us a Kelvin temperature of 169.4. And it makes sense. If you decrease the volume from 0.5 to 0.24, then the Kelvin temperature should decrease. Now our goal is to find the original temperature in Celsius. So we need to convert this back to Celsius. To do that, subtract it by 273. So 169.4 minus 273 will give us a Celsius temperature of negative 103.56 uh, Celsius, which is very, very cold. So that's the Celsius temperature. 